Hello and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to teach you how to get proper mesh collisions for a mesh in Roblox. So there are many reasons this might be useful, but you clicked on this video, you probably have your own reasons. So let's get right into this tutorial. All right, so there are a few prerequisites um, for this tutorial, if you will. And the first is being first being that your mesh is going to need to be triangulated. Now, this is really simple, and all it means is that it's changing the geometry of your mesh from quads uh, to triangles, if you didn't already know. So, um, if you open up your mesh in Blender, under the Modifiers tab, there's a very handy little modifier um, called Triangulate. Um, if you click on that, then it'll automatically triangulate your mesh. Alright, so with that all done, you're going to need to export this as a .obj or wavefront file. Now, I'm going to also export mine as a .fbx file, as I've had a few issues with Roblox not separating .obj files, but I, that might just be a me problem. Um, so, now that you have your file exported as a .obj file, we're going to need to install some plugins. Um, the first being the .obj importer plugin. Um, this is going to be what adds collisions to your mesh, and it's going to do this via a bunch of wedge parts. Um, and the other thing, plugin that you're going to need is the model resize plugin. Um, and this I'm going to be using because it doesn't screw up collisions. The scale tool for Roblox, at least in my experience, has screwed up the wedges and collisions um, because it's screwing up the wedges. Um, so you should use the model resize plugin. Um, and it's another just insanely useful plugin to have around. Links to both of these plugins will be in the description if you can't find them yourself. All right, so now we're going to open up Roblox Studio. Now, if you already have a place open, um, then that works fine. But I am going to be opening up a new base plate. Now, what I'm going to need to do is publish this as a game um, just so that I can import the meshes. So just click Alt-P. Uh, to publish the game and then go through that and you can name it whatever you're, you want it really doesn't matter all right so with your game published if you don't have the game explorer tab already open then you're wanna go, gonna want to go under the view tab in roblox studio and click game explorer now you're gonna want to open that if you so once you have that tab open if you don't see an import button at the bottom of it then what you're gonna want to do is click right click on the meshes tab in the game explorer and just click add assets now if you already have the import plugin open if you have already have the import button there then you can just click on that all right so now you're going to want to import your mesh now i'll be importing my mesh as an fbx file but that's just as i i already gave reasons for that earlier so we're gonna oh, so you're gonna go into your file explorer find the file explorer find the mesh uh and it will bring up a little pop-up with some check marks. Now you're going to see three options. Reverse, inward, normal, and uh, rescale to large. And you're just going to leave it as it is and click apply. Once all of that is imported, you're going to want to go under your meshes tab in the game explorer and right-click it and click right -click, uh, select all your meshes, uh, right-click them, and then select insert with location. And that should insert that right on top of your base plate or whatever you're working on. All right, so with both of those, or with your meshes imported, you're going to want to go open your file explorer. Now you're going to want to find wherever you've exported your OBJ, and that will come with an MTL file. So I'm going to go under my folder where I put all my 3D models um, and I'm going to want to find whatever mine is named after. Um, and I just have mine named Racetrack. So on my end, I see three files, a .fbx, a .mtl, and a .obj file. Now, on, uh, for my first thing, I'm going to click on my uh, .obj file, right-click on it now, um, and click Open With, uh, and under Open With, click Notepad. Now you're going to see a uh, notepad open with a bunch of little uh, location, um, little like locations. And that's just the vertexes 
of your or vertices of your mesh, I believe. So you're going to click Control A if you're on Windows or whatever, or Command A on uh, Mac or whatever, and then just copy that. Now you're going to want to navigate back to Roblox, and in the Explorer, you're going to want to add a script or local script to your workspace. Now you're going to want to name that script. Um, uh, dot ob uh, just name it obj or you can name it really whatever you want but it's i typically name it obj as it's easier to find and we're going to need to find which script it is script it is later on now with all of those uh little location data from your dot obj file you're going to want to paste that into this script now we're going to navigate back to file explorer in the, in uh, your little uh, file explorer, uh, you're going to find the MTL file and do the same thing. Open with and select Notepad. Now you're going to notice this is a bit different. Uh, once again, just copy it all. Um, and we're going to want to create a new script in our workspace. And we're just going to want to name that MTL just so that we can easily find it. I believe it, uh, the MTL just is talking about the material. Um, don't quote me on that though. All right, so with both of those scripts created, we're gonna wanna click on our plugins tab. And we're gonna find our .obj import plugin. And we're just gonna click on that. Now it tells us to select um, our script uh, normal, local, or module. It really doesn't matter what kind of script it is with your OBJ code. So we're going to select that script and click continue. Now we're going to script the MTL, select the MTL script, click continue, and then just kick, kick continue um, uh, until it's rendering out your object. Now you're going to want to close your OBJ loader. So you might notice that your object is a bit bigger. Um, now, all you have to do, and it might be rotated the wrong way too. So you're going to want to open your um, model tab, and you're going to want to uncheck uh, move um, so that you can move it freely. Um, and you want to select, make sure rotated selected and keep it at like 90 degrees so that you can easily make it the right, uh, rotate it the right amount. Um, and you're just going to want to scale up your original mesh uh, to the proper size and, al and align it with um, with the wedge parts. You might want to delete the base plate um, just so that you can easily see what you're doing. Um, but yeah, we're just going to resize um, our little original mesh that we imported and um, align it. All right, so with your meshes as closely aligned as you can get it, you're going to want to um, have both of your meshes that you imported selected in the file, uh, in the, it's not the file explorer, uh, the explorer in Roblox, you want to click, click command G to group it, and you can name it whatever you want. I'm going to name mine track as I'm building a racetrack. All right, so now you're going to want to select the mesh, um, your uh, wedges, and that will be called mesh, and you're going to control G to group that, and you can name whatever this what you want. I'll just name it racetrack. All right, so this is when our second plugin comes in hand. So you're going to want to find a plugin called Model Resize, and you're going to click Toggle Handles. Now you're going to see th four little uh, yellow spheres, or six, um, and you're going to want to grab those and make this object the proper size. Now, you might want to use another object in the scene just to make sure that it is properly scaled. Um, for example, for me, I might use a car that I 3D modeled just to make sure that this racetrack is the proper size. And you're just going to want to keep scaling this object up until it is adequate. All right. So your job of re of uh, properly uh, aligning your object earlier might not have been perfect. So if you select whatever uh, your object was and just uh, realign it or slightly rescale it, um, then that might just uh, make it uh, just to better um, fit the wedges, then you can do that. Um, 
as it would certainly help uh, fit. Now, I don't recommend moving the um, wedges as that can be really intensive as you're going to be moving a lot of them. So just try to move the original mesh itself. All right, so there's a few more things we want to do before this is entirely ready. Um, first of all, you're going to want to go under your uh, the meshes that you imported, and you want to make sure that they're anchored and that their can collide is set on off. Um, the reason you want to do this is so that, um, well, they don't uh, mess with uh, your collisions, as if they're set with can collide on, um, then they kind of mess that up, uh, and that can be not fun, as you, that's a kind of wastes uh, the point of using the plugin. So, another thing you're going to want to do, um, well, you could test it right now, um, but the collisions might be a little bit off, and your character might fall through uh, the floor a bit, and you just, you're just going to want to bring up um, or bring down your track, depending on how it works. If your character's been standing above ground, then obviously bring up your track mesh or whatever mesh you're using, and the character's standing a bit uh, low, then if it's standing a bit low, uh, then lower it. Um, and another thing that we're going to want to do um, is under your mesh group, you're going to open that, and that might take a little while to completely open, as that's going to be opening up a lot of meshes. So you're going to want to scroll all the way down, um, and it still might be opening after a good uh, 10 seconds as it's importing so many meshes. Uh, it's opening so many meshes. Um, so you're going to want to select all of them, uh, and just put transparency on one. Now this makes it so that they're transparent. Now this is good as, um, you can't see them so that they don't really screw with how they look. Um, so, but once you have all of your, uh, once you have the track, uh, positioned in the Y right and your wedges, set so tr transparency on one, then you should have working mesh collisions. Mm, yeah. So thank you for watching and goodbye. Uh, I might show off 20 or 30 seconds of this actually working uh, just to show it off. Yeah. So thank you for watching. Goodbye. Uh, see you in another video. Um, yeah.